Hello everybody, welcome back to Green Chat. My name is Cleese, and this is a place where we talk about Pantheon Rise of the Fallen. Today specifically, we're going to be talking about community. So without that being the last thing I say, let's get right to it. And hello everybody, welcome back to Green Chat. Here we are yet again. Before this episode really cracks in, I wanted to preface that today we're talking about community, obviously, but there's no like big aha moments or anything crazy or revolutionary or anything. This is, again, I'm just a regular dude talking about Pantheon Rise of the Fallen and uh, just some interesting points, I guess, that I came across with this uh, posted topic of community, reading through the forum post, uh, by all means, it's the community debate, uh, community debate post by Kilson. So I'm not going to go through a lot of the points of the post, but uh, you know, feel free to do so, especially with the last episode where I went and showed you how to use the forms. You know what I'm saying? But um, yeah, just some interesting things to cover down on as far as community goes. What it means to everybody is so different. It's, it's, it's wild. And what is it going to mean moving forward in Pantheon. I guess I have some thoughts on that, and uh, I think a lot of people are going in directions that I think might not make a lot of sense. At least it doesn't make sense to me, and I'm just going to share that with you guys, how it's not making sense. No, I'm just kidding. But at least with how it makes sense to me and what community means and how it's going to have a huge impact. I mean, they bring it up all the time, but how it will have a big impact in Pantheon Rise of the Fallen. So cracking over to the post, here we go. We have Kilson, bam, moderator. Look at that, 8,376 posts as of April 29th, 2019. 3.58 a.m.? Just kidding, I think he's over in Australia. Anyways, uh, or he's just really that dedicated. A community debate, how big is too big when it comes to a community in an MMORPG? Can you put a number to it or do you judge it based on other factors? Simple question, right? So, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, some people say, why call it community? It's just technology. The machines are connected, not the people, bro. Uh, some people think the entire server should be considered a community. Some people think a guild. Some people think their circle of friends where their shard uh, of friends or like link shell, I think is a popular term. I, I know Final Fantasy XIV uses link shells or something like that to communicate across different areas. It's That's obviously not going to be a thing here, but... Um, you know, you can create like chat groups and stuff like that where you can communicate and not necessarily be in the same guild or all sorts of stuff. I mean, that's, that's community and all those things are important. Um, and I think that's really, at least a lot of the things I just said, maybe just like circle of friends or a guild or, uh, a group of buddies or, uh, a town full of people, you know, where does where does it meet community? Where do these groups, where do you hinge on community? And that's really what I wanted to talk about today. And kind of the, the skeptic or the problem with, not the problem. See, I, I don't want to make this too like, I have a problem here and here's the solution and my video just helped you get there. That's not what I want to do with this. Really, I just want to talk about what community uh, means to me. So, Moving forward, uh, again, I'm just scrolling through here arbitrarily, not really covering many of these topics because they're pretty much just what I just said, but there's one I want to specifically highlight. But what I think community really ties into and what, because Pantheon often engages their community with this topic in different ways, community. And I think where community really tightly ties in is behavior. And that's the key in my, in my mind. Uh, behavior ties in across a lot of their systems and then community is the thing that holds them accountable for their behavior. So it's not really, you know, when does the size get too big to where the community can't hold itself accountable for its behavior, right? And that's, I think, a big point. So if your community is gigantic, you could be a complete a-hole all the time, and it wouldn't matter. And if it's too small, one little small, you know, like, incident on your report, and boom, you are the huge dingle donger berry spanker of the server, potentially, just potentially, you know, not for sure, potentially. 
So in essence, what I'm trying to really say is you could potentially control the behavior of a group, especially in an MMORPG specifically, because everybody ha already has a goal, like a specific singular goal or close to singular goal in mind. It's not like real life uh, where, you know, some guy's over here trying to be a doctor and some guy's over here trying to, you know, uh, make a YouTube video. Um, everybody's doing the same thing. They're all creating the same characters. Everybody's really driven by the same stuff close to it. Loot, money. There's a, there's a finite uh, realm of possibilities for what you can achieve in Pantheon Rise of the Fallen. And that's uh, where it gets a little interesting is where your community size, whatever that means, community, either the population of the server or your group of friends can dictate um, how your behavior will be. Basically, it's kind of a social engineering type thing. I'm just again, I'm just a regular dude. I don't even want to get like sophisticated with this video, but in general, you can control uh, behaviors with size of the community in specifically controlled environments such as Pantheon as the Fallen. So why even bring this up? Why even go into it? Um, I think the first thing that's interesting is the people in this community is going to be different or more different than it has ever been, especially in games, uh, excuse me, especially in a game like, um, it's actually going to be like this probably in Classic WoW as well, and uh, in Panther Rise of Fallen, or games that are coming out like this, in the sense that some people have never even experienced what this game is like. So when you ask the community a question, you could get a resounding 80% says this, 20% says that. Now the, the creators are going to have to really, you know, uh, deal with that. That's their problem to deal with. But don't think in your mind that just because you're a minority or you feel like you're the minority all the time that they're not going to go with the minority in this, in this instance. You know, English, hard to, hard to English sometimes. So from that, what I would, what I would say is the most important thing to do is to how, how you frame the question. So depending on how you ask, how big does a community need to be to make it worth or good or great for Pantheon Rise of the Fallen, you got to know who you're talking to in your audience, which is going to make this type of format, I mean, asking just a general question for everybody that's invested in, in Pantheon makes sense, but a lot of these people, I think, have never even really, you know, taken the time to really think of when they're answering or how they're answering this question. So to frame the question, how big does the community need to be? Let's go into uh, something that just happened to me the other day. Hey, this is a, uh, you know, green chat, call me please, real life story. So I was talking to a gamer that I know personally, and we're just actually, we were like on a road trip. This sounds weird. We're on a road trip. And uh, we're just, you know, when you're on road trips, you just find stuff to talk about. And uh, something that came up, I was like, hey, what was your favorite uh, Super Nintendo game? And he looked over and was like, dude, I've never played Super Nintendo. And I was like, what? And, uh, you know, he's a super gamer, too. He's like, Gamer 5000. And I'm like, <laughs> what? And then he's like, yeah, it came out. That was like before my time, before I was born. This guy's in his 20s. You know, he's, he's, he's you know, works with me. And I was like, holy cow, that was super weird for me to be like, wow, I've, yeah. And then I started asking more questions about like MMOs and stuff like that. And he's never really gotten into them. And his idea of his community or whatever, of like, it's like a group of friends and like four people. And he never breaks out of that shell. And uh, people avoid WoW like the plague. They avoid MMOs right now like the plague. But I, I really feel like they may start working their way back. Uh, or we might see a lot more people like this where they haven't even experienced the things that we've experienced at all. So when you ask them these questions, the majority is probably going to be them because uh, let's face it, 30, well, I mean, uh, most people that play MMOs is like, what, 25 to 35? Uh, you know, a lot of us are, are outside. I mean, a lot of us that played EverQuest are outside of the demographic now. We're no longer in the majority. We're moved to the minority. And this game is based off the principles of what the minority experienced back in the day. So Framing the question is very important uh, when you're presenting this type of, you know, query to a group of people. And the amount of different directions we're going to go in is crazy. But at the base principle, like I said, is community directly impacts 
behavior of your players. And I think that's the biggest takeaway and why Pantheon is continually pinging, I think is because they need to be able to frame what community means before we get to that point. Granted, they're going to use beta and alpha and all that stuff to really help that out. But at the end of the day, that's still tough because what you can't do is shrink a server down. You can grow it, but you can't shrink it. And then if you, you know, like the population, you can't be like, well, you know what? You guys love tier made characters. We're going to move you over to the shard and split up, you know, or they can create free moves, which I think that'll be a case anyways. But, you know, it's very important. So when they start, people are going to try to go together. And then if it gets funky monkey, uh, you know, gets funky monkey, they can't really shrink it, but they can grow it. But if it, they make it too small, then it's going to be like a big, you know, they designed this game for something that's not even feasible. So it's a very touchy thing uh, because they're trying to control. I mean, I, actually, I don't know if they are, but in my opinion, that's what we're trying to drive here is behavior, accountability, stuff like that. So I wanted to highlight one post because I thought it was uh, at least worth worth uh, worth the point. I'm trying to, not really a point, but something of note to bring up as far as community goes. Um, and Mr. Beefcake here, which has done plenty of posts. I know I've talked about him in the past. Good old Beefcake. Uh, servers should be as large as possible. Respawns, respawns can be adjusted. Uh, everybody could probably be on the same server with the respawns. And I was thinking uh, back to my olden days in EQ, these starting areas used creatures or mobs that were very like a lot uh you can control you're not gonna have the problem where you're like you can't find things to kill at like level one to five because they're like everywhere like all over the place and like little rats little like bats and stuff little creatures you know usually are like the first things you start killing and then it starts thinning out when you get to like level you know 10 8 7 anyway not to say it's gonna be like eq but they're going with the same starting style but i don't think it's gonna be a you know, of course, servers can be as large as possible or should be as large as possible. Response can be adjusted. Would not be a problem. Too many people here think the community is just their friends. Communities are much more than that. I, w I should always see many people for the first time. Uh, yes, that's important to see many people for the first time, but it doesn't really mean anything, right? Does, do, are you going to, so let's say you see people and you're like, oh, hey, it's that guy. Or you see people for the first time all the time. Is that really going to be registering on your radar? Eh, maybe. Uh, but again, it comes down to behavior, not so much uh, making new acquaintances. Because that's, is that really based in what a community is? Uh, making, making an acquaintance? You know, this is where this, you know, kind of get into the weeds here. And that's, again, why I'm just the guy talking about Pantheon as the Fallen. And not something super important like, uh, who knows what. So servers need to be big enough for at least three to four mega guilds with several hundred members. Now, this is where I'd almost say what came first, chicken or the egg kind of situation, is why do you need three to four mega guilds of several hundred members? Because rating sizes in this game are not going to be like they were any kidding to be smaller. We already know this. So what drives the several hundred members? I think maybe like EQ mentality where raids were like 70 people deep or so because you need to bench, you know, bench players as well because how are you going to make that many people show up on one night? And then also, when they introduced guild levels and rewards into MMOs, which I really hope Pantheon does not do, uh, but this has no reference to, I don't mean to be picking on Beefcake, by the way, I think a lot of people think this way. And again, I think it's taking you somewhere else mentally than what you should be thinking about when you think about community. That's basically what I'm trying to make here with this with, with, I'm using this as the springboard for my point. Um, and then 10 large guilds with over 100 members, plus 10, you know, several small guilds with 50 plus members. I mean, this is just trying to quantify a group uh, of people. Uh, many small friendship guilds with less than 50 members. I would avoid small servers like the plague. Sure, uh, servers with low populations would be terrible, but it's all relative. If they make hot population X, Y, and Z, and low population this and that you wouldn't really know i mean the population will probably represent on the server list and you'll avoid those anyways but um especially in a grouping up game it makes sense to want to say hey the server should be filled with a lot of people but 
in the instance where um, community comes into it, specifically, I think the volume of people is relative to the behavior that you set. All right, so what am I really getting at with all this community uh, mumbo jumbo? I am just trying to share my two cents, guys, you know? Just talk about a little pantheon on your, uh, whenever you're listening to this, and basically go into that community directly relates to behavior. Now, I know I said that I wouldn't have any wow factor moments in this one, like, ooh, revelation, but I think the biggest thing, how big is too big when it comes to community and MMORPGs? I think that's, there is no such thing. How big is too big? I think it's, uh, it'll self-regulate itself. It'll, I mean, in the lower levels, it's more important to uh, have a healthy server or like the, you know, when you first enter the game, the compression you get when you have a gajillion level ones trying to get through, that's important. But in the end game, what really comes together there, in my opinion, is what tools you have to build your community and hold itself accountable. And those tools will be through guilds. So what tools they give to guilds and how people embody this and run their guilds and stuff like that is going to be what it comes down to, you know, and how the guilds compete with each other and stuff like that. And I think that's really it. I think that's it. I mean, it's, I mean, that's super not like, oh my gosh, whoa. But uh, yeah, so I think guilds, behavior, community, all super related. Uh, how big is too big? I don't think there really is a number. I think the game will have a limiter on that. Uh, maybe so, maybe not. We'll find out. But at the end of the day, I think this question here is them trying to frame how they should approach their audience. And at the same time, making us feel very engaged. Uh, so guys, that is it for this green chat. If you enjoyed it, I know it wasn't one of my, uh, you know, I wasn't like, it's just kind of me just chatting about community for a little bit. But hey, if you enjoyed it, uh, you know, give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and uh, definitely hit me up with any comments you have for me in the comments below. And uh, again, I really appreciate you checking me out, and I'll see you again really soon.